Gardening is one of those activities that we could easily spend a lifetime learning everything that we think we need to know about gardening. I know because I'm attempting to spend my lifetime learning more and more about gardening. There's just so much out there, so much information that it can be overwhelming. So where do you begin? Or if you've begun, how do you continue with just all of that information that you think you need to know? Well, I suggest that you simplify. Bring it down to the most simple element of gardening and start there. Too often we take a macro approach to gardening. We think about our garden as a whole. So when the weather affects our garden, that's the way we think of it. Rather than bringing it down to the plant level, how did the weather affect the individual plants within our garden? If we have a pest that moves into our garden, we think about our garden being attacked by that particular pest. When really, if you slow down and look at the individual plants in our garden, your garden isn't being attacked by aphids. Maybe it's just the spinach that's being affected by aphids. That's the idea behind the single seed challenge. The idea that you approach the perspective, not from a garden that's being affected, but to each individual plant. How is it being affected throughout the entire gardening season? Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I didn't come up with the idea behind the single seed challenge. This comes from Scott Head of the Scott Head YouTube channel, and I'll be sure and put a link to his channel below. And a couple years ago, he offered the challenge to gardeners all over the world to slow down and start focusing on a single seed. Follow that seed from when you put it into soil until the end of your gardening season. And by focusing on that seed, you can begin to see how all of the factors, some that you have control over, some that you don't, how all of those factors affect that seed and that plant during that growing season. And incredibly, you can begin to learn things that you never really realized you needed to know and learn things that will affect the other plants in your garden for years to come. Two years ago, when I first started the single seed challenge, I chose a black crim tomato. And I've got some videos that show planting that first seed, putting that plant into the ground, and then starting to follow the plant. And things were going great until I had a hailstorm that devastated my garden. That was the macro approach. But when I looked at that single black crim tomato plant, I realized that it was more resilient than just about any other plant in my garden. And so I focused on it, I babied it, I did all I could to help it recover from that hailstorm. And it did a pretty good job of recovering until a crazy early freeze killed it, along with most of the other plants in my garden. But for those first few months of growth, I was really thinking about that plant. I was noticing the leaves because it developed a case of leaf curl. So I learned a lot more about leaf curl. I wasn't getting a lot of pollination. So I learned a lot more about pollination and particularly how hot temperatures can cause blossom drop and not get the fruit set I was looking for. There were many other aspects of gardening that I learned by focusing on that single tomato plant. And even though I never got fruit, I consider it a very productive season as far as learning more about growing tomatoes. Last year, I chose a diamond eggplant as my seed of choice for this challenge. I've grown eggplant a little bit in the past, but last year I learned more about eggplant than I ever had before. And I show some of that in last year's videos. The plant that I chose was growing with some similar eggplants. So I could see two of the same variety growing side by side. But now that I was focused on one of those plants in particular, I saw how shade 
the lack of sun really began to impact that plant and where I had it growing in that bed. Because as the sun would begin to lower in the sky in the afternoon, my plant, the seed challenge plant, was the first one to be shaded. So it got as much as an hour, maybe even more than an hour, less sunlight each day. The rest of the plants in that bed actually grew a little bit better than that particular eggplant. But it still did great. And as the beautiful purple flowers began to appear on the plant, and then as the fruit began to appear, I was researching more and more about growing eggplants. And at the end of the season, I harvested the eggplants from that plant, ate them, they were delicious, and I felt that I had a wonderful season because I was able to actually take it all the way through to harvest. This year, I'm hoping to achieve that same goal as well as I've chosen a Waltham butternut squash as my seed of choice this year. A little while back, I did a video on this bug out seed bag from True Leaf Market. The idea behind this bag is for you to create a survival garden with dozens of different seeds that can provide you food during the course of the year. Well, I thought it would be nice to approach this year by taking a food crop and follow the course of the season with that idea in mind. A survival garden, trying to grow as much food as I can using this Waltham butternut squash seed from True Leaf Market. Rather than just grow it and harvest it and eat it, this time I'm going to actually track how much fruit is produced, how much it weighs, how much food I can actually get from a single plant that starts with this single seed. And I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. I'll be growing other plants, even though only one will be designated as part of this challenge. With many plants, you'll get more fruit when you harvest the fruit as it ripens. But that's not always the case with something like winter squash. That takes a long time to ripen. And by the time I harvest it, there won't be enough time for new flowers to set and new fruit to grow. And so the methods I'll have to vary may involve different fertilizers or different amount of suns, but it'll all be focused on how much food can I get from the Waltham butternut squash. You can do the same thing. You can plant a single seed and follow it throughout the entire season and learn about all the different aspects of gardening along the way. Now, the challenge as set forth by Scott Head is for you to actually document what you're doing. Go ahead and make some videos and post them on YouTube. Use the hashtag Single Seed Challenge 2022. And that way you can follow other gardeners as they're making videos and other gardeners can follow you as you're making your videos. We share this information and hopefully you'll learn a little bit about the butternut squash as I make videos over the course of the season. But we can all learn about what you're doing in your garden with your successes and your failures. Because even Scott Head, who created this challenge, has had some issues in the last couple years as well. The kind of issues where he doesn't get the harvest, but he learns as a result of documenting what's happening as the plants are suffering and he's trying to figure out how to achieve success. You don't have to have success to learn enough for the next year to ensure that you have a better chance for success. So take up the single seed challenge. Pick a seed, whatever it happens to be, grow it, and then tell others about what you've learned from growing that plant. I'm Gardner Scott. Enjoy gardening.